Hello and welcome to today's quick tip about using gradients. Having gradient colours in your background and on your characters can really make them pop and stop them looking flat. But there's no obvious way to using gradients on vector levels and open tunes, but you can using the vector brushes. Let's take a look. So let's add a vector level first. Okay, so what we need to do is start with a new colour and let's make it bright red for now. And I'll draw a plain rectangle and we'll fill it in. And what we can do is we'll change this brush from being a plain vector brush with no style to being a vector brush with a gradient in. So first we'll take away the trails and the vector brushes from the bottom and just leave these generated sections. So the one to select is this one here, which is a gradient between two colours. And you see immediately the background changes and at the bottom here you can see the two colours that are chosen, the one you selected and the green. And you can change the colours by selecting one of these two and going to the colour tab. So we'll graduate it from yellow through to red, we've already got the red there selected. And then if you go to settings, this is where you can affect how the gradient looks. Starting at the bottom, if you change the smoothness all the way to the left to one, you'll see the two colours with no graduation between them. As you increase the smoothness, the gradient scale changes between them. So if I put that back onto no smoothness, you can see the other values working clearer. The angle is a rotation angle between the two colours, so you can have either at the top, bottom, left or right, or at any angle between. And if I change the X position, you'll see you're altering the point at which the two colours merge. And the Y position won't see any difference until you rotate the colours, and then the Y position moves the two colours up and down. And again, if you affect the smoothness first, you see how it changes the range of the two colours. So more often than not, you'll want the angle to be either zero to get a left and right split, or 90 to get a top and bottom split, or negative 90 to traverse the colours. And it's as simple as that. And now you have a fill colour. This works with any shape. So if I draw a random shape, and then fill with a new colour, you'll see the gradient filling it. And if you don't want an outline, you can use the select tool, select the line and change its color zero, which simply removes it. Okay, so that's a standard gradient between two colors in a straight line. There's also a brush to have a radial gradient. So if we create a new color, make that blue, and then go to the vector styles and select this brush here to the right of the straight gradient and this is the radial gradient, as you can see in the preview at the bottom. So again, we'll just draw a rectangle using the plain colour first. And then we'll fill it in using the gradient. So if we go to the settings, and you'll see a very similar set of settings. And if you bring the smoothness down to the left hand side, you'll see no gradient between the two colours. And all the way to the right, and it's difficult to distinguish the line between the two colours. So usually you would have it somewhere in the middle or so, depending on the effect you're trying to show. But if I put it quite a long way to the left, and we'll see what the X, Y and radius do. They're fairly self-explanatory. The X moves the centre point left and right, the Y moves it up and down, and the radius is simply the size of the circle. So by adjusting these, you can get the effect that you need. So this is quite a handy way to set up a scene without having to draw backgrounds and objects in other paint programs. So for example, to draw a simple outside scene with a sky and some grass, we'll draw a box for the sky and one for the grass, just there. And then we'll just change the colours to match the scene we're trying to create. And again, I'll just remove the outside lines Go to the camera view, and there we go, the basics of a background. And of course you haven't got to just use this for backgrounds, you can use this for characters and foreground objects too. And that's all for now. And I'll be back next Friday with another tutorial. And that's a guarantee.